20. There's lots of different stuff in it. So the graph like this, there's this little thing right there. First of all, you know what this means? Break. Good, there's a break. Um, so we don't consider any of these numbers in between here. We just start at 6. So there's this graph, and I'm just going to draw the shape of it for now. Oh, I started too low. Uh, so it's like up here and goes down here. So it wants us to tell what the domain is based on that graph. What's the definition of the domain? Input, uh, inputs, right? All of them, all of the inputs. So if we look at this graph, there's no graph here, okay? This graph is a function. A function takes input, turns it into output, and it has every input, has only one and, out, one and only one output, right? That's the definition of a, of a function. If we come here within the break somewhere, there's no output there. So the function, you know, that's not within the domain of the function. There's no output for that input. So that wouldn't be part of the domain. So where does the domain start? Six. At six, and where does it end? 11. Any input between 6 and 11, or 6 and 11, including 6 and 11, uh, is a valid input. If I go to 12, it's not valid because there's no graph. There's no output. But for all the inputs that have outputs, that's your, that's your domain. So your domain, you can say uh, 6 to 11. This is an uh, uh, interval notation, where we go from 6 to 11, and these square brackets mean at 6 and at 11. Sometimes you'll go up to 6, get close to 6, but you won't include 6, so we'd use parentheses in that case. So if we're talking about the domain, it's definitely understood to be uh, the interval from 6 to 11, including 6 and 11. Now with the range, what's the definition of the range? All the outputs. Okay, so if you look at this graph, all right, we, we look at the outputs that it has. It doesn't have any outputs here. It doesn't have any outputs up here. Where does it have outputs? 40 to 80. 40 to 80, right here. At 40. Stops here. At 80. Yep. So from 40, including 40, to 80, including 80. That's it. Do you put commas? Hmm? Do you do commas or a dash? It depends. If I don't use any brackets or parentheses or anything, then I would just say 6 dash 11. Uh, but if I use the interval notation, then I would use the brackets and I'd use square brackets. If you write 6 to 11, that's fine. If you write 6 to 11, that's good from 6 to 11, that's fine, whatever. Just as long as you include 6 and 11 and all the values in between. You would write that sentence out if you wanted. Yeah? So why is it written down differently on the notation? Uh, I guess is it like this? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's another way you could write it. Right. X is, what does this sign mean? Well, you'd read it less than, right? Because it's, it's a less than symbol. But you could also say X is greater than 6. And also X is less than 11. And also X could be equal to 6 which is what I've been saying with the square brackets. X could be equal to six or X could be equal to 11. So X can be anywhere between these two. That's another way of saying it as well. And the other one probably says Y is like this. Next question. Yeah. Literature Club is pretty sorely straight money to the print shop tries five dollar each book at a single fee of forty dollars to create the film. And they only charge us about once and not paper. How many books can a club print with a budget? Ten thousand ninety dollars. Okay. So how does it work? You like you go into the print shop, you know, order some books. How do you pay them? How does this work out? What's the forty dollars about? Create the film apparently that is, is needed to make books. Right? There's this film that you need to make. Um, do they keep charging this forty dollars over and over? Do they charge you once, like to just start 
of the job, I guess. And then after that, what do you pay? Five dollars per book. Okay. So you pay forty dollars. Do you pay more than forty dollars? Well, you really get a book, right? If you start getting books, you start paying more. Right. So matter of fact, we would add on some money. How much money would we add on? Just five dollars. Five x. Five times x the number of what? Of books. Okay. So if your budget is how much? So what does that have to do with 40 plus 5x? It's equal to it. You have to get this to come out to be 10,090. Or less than 10,090, right? That could be okay. So we could technically put a little less than. Right? But we're really just going to solve it like an equation. Uh, so how many books are we going to order? We'll subtract 40. So 5x equals or is less than or equal to 1,050. And then we divide by 5, x, 10,050 divided by 5, uh, 210. So as long as you order 210 books or less, less than that, then you'll come in under budget or right at budget. So, no, 210. Like what number? Like say uh, 16. 16. <coughs> okay, so what is the definition of a function? Is it function? What does it do? Um, like say a uh, when you have, you have a negative and a negative for domain and range and such, you, uh, you can't have a, uh, a negative. Uh, well, let's maybe try to get too specific. Um, a function in general, like the definition of a function, who can break down the <coughs> definition of a function, the most basic definition of a function? Yeah. A relation where every input has an output? Yeah, a relation. So a relation is a simple thing. Things go into the relation. Call it a relation. And then stuff comes out. Something goes in here, and something comes out. In, something comes out. Okay. But with a relation, I could have two things come out if I wanted. Right? Uh, like the square root. Well, if I put in. If this relation gives me the square root of a number, right? Square root of some number else. If I put in 4, and I look at the square root of 4, and you get 2. Or it could be a negative 2. Two things came out of that relation. 2 squared is 4, and negative 2 times itself is 4. Uh, so functions can't do that. Functions, uh, if we want to turn this into a function, we just ignore the negative one, and now we have a function, because the function has only one output for every input. If something goes into a function, it's a function, only one thing will come out. All right? So we're looking at number 16, and we're asking ourselves, does this happen? Does only one thing come out for everything that goes in? Okay. So if I look at number 16, which of the things are the things that are going into the relation? What's going in? What's the input? How do I know? It's the x's. The x's. The first number. We have an x and a y. The first number is the input. Okay. So. If you look at the inputs, does every input only have one output? Nope. No. No? Can you give me a counterexample? Can you tell me that, like, an example of that something that, yeah. that um, doesn't happen for? 4 and 0 and 4 and 1. Yeah, 4 goes to 0. That would be OK, except for 4 goes to 1 as well. So this is not a function. Yeah. 
Whether I write it 21, negative 21 sevenths times x or negative 21x over 7, does that make a difference? That's one thing that's helpful to recognize. 21x over 7 or 21 sevenths times x, it's the same thing. If I multiply 21 over 7 by x over 1, I get 21x over 7. Okay. So, ideas? Yes. Multiply by 7. Multiply by 7 to cancel out the 7 on both sides, okay? Multiply by 7. So we distribute this 7, that's important. So this gives negative 21x <coughs> minus 35x equals, geez, what's 24 times 7? No. It's just your idea. 24 times 7. 368. Okay, thanks. That makes sense. All right, now what? Chauncey? I'm not saying anything. I'm just asking. Oh. Um, you could combine the x's. Yep, combine the x's. That sounds good. Negative uh, 56 x equals 168. And then? Divide by 6. Does that come out nicely for us? Negative 3. Negative 3. Cool. Here's something else we could do. What's 21 over 7? 3. So we got negative 3x minus 5x equals 24. Do that. Negative 8x equals 24. Clearly x equals negative 3. We do that. That's just lucky for us because 21 over 7 happens to be 3. But it all works either way. What's the next one? Linear functions. Here's the test to see if a function is linear. If you can write it like this, mx plus b, basically in slope intercept form, then yes, you have a, a, a linear function. And this is important. It's x to the first. Now this m could be anything. It could even be 1. That would be all right. That's still a number times x. So let's look at this function. <coughs> is it linear? Why or why not? Not why, how do you know? It doesn't have x to the third. x to the third, not x to the first. Okay. x to the first, this, x to the first is what allows the graph of a function like this to step up, just gradually. Every step of the way steps up with that slope. But if we did something like x to the third, let's do that real quick, that basic one. Okay, let's see what we put in and what we get out. When you put in a 1, what do you get out of this? You, you cube 1, what do you get? 3. And you just cube 1. You just multiply it by itself, one. right? 1 times 1 times 1. You get 1. What do you get when you cube 2? 4. One more. 8. Yeah, cube it. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is getting big fast. What do you do when you cube 0? What do you get? 0. You get 0, so it goes through here. What do you get when you cube negative 1? Negative one. Cube negative two? Okay. Does this look very line like linear? No, it doesn't. It's very curvy. To get from here to there and through the origin, we've got to bend the line. Right? It's a curve. It's a curvy curve. So um, no, it's not linear. Number six. Not linear. If you were to graph it, we get this curvy thing, and you know it's it's x cubed minus seven, so we wouldn't get zero out of this. We would get negative seven, negative one, right? Negative one minus seven, negative eight. Negative eight minus seven, negative fifteen, and on it goes. But it would still look like that. It still wouldn't be a line. If x is equal to negative six, we put that into the function. Function y equals, or is it, it's f of x. f of x equals x cubed minus 7. So we cube negative 6, negative 6 times negative 6 times negative 6 minus 7. That's negative 216 minus 7. That's negative 223. There it is. There's what you get. That's the output for negative 6. Yes. 
Could you do a 39 for me, please? 39. can to eliminate everything on the right side that isn't a variable so that the variable is isolated. So what? Subtract 15, certainly you can do that. So we'll subtract 15 on both sides. Negative 15 equals 3 fifteenths y. And 3 fifths times y. Multiply by 15. Multiply by 15. Multiply by 15. Maybe I should. Uh, Write it on the left side so it's easy to look at. Multiply this by 15. Multiply this by 15. Okay, 15 times 15, negative 225. 15's cancel, great idea. That way it's a lot more simple. Three, y equals negative 75. Other ideas? I see. Uh, now, if I change what your idea was, don't take it as it's my way is right and yours is wrong. It's a silly thing to think. But we can do something else. Uh, negative 15. And this is just what I would do just out of habit. I've just done these things so many times. Just multiply this by the reciprocal. Multiply this by the reciprocal. I can write that over 1 for 1. Okay, so now this becomes a little bit easier. Now it's 15 times negative 5. So that's negative 75 equals y. But we're, do we're doing the same thing. We're multiplying by five or 15 and dividing by 3. That's what multiplying by 15 thirds is. Uh, just that way we get to cancel that 15 and um, it'll make it easier. We also could just go back to the beginning of the problem and say 3 fifteenths is just 1 fifth. Simplify the fraction before we even start the problem. Uh, we could multiply by 15 in the first step. We could do lots of things first or second, <coughs> whatever we want to do. Okay. Any more? I give you a problem like 3x plus 5x uh, equals uh, 32. What would your first step be? Combine, combine like terms. A and X. How did you know you could combine those two? Because they're both x's? Not just x's, but x's to the first power. Right? That's the point. But yeah, they're common terms. They're like terms that you can have together. Are these like terms? Yeah. Yeah. X x, this one's divided by 2, this one's divided by 4, but they're still both x's. Can you put these together the way they are right now? No. no. What do you need? Same denominator. Same denominator. What will the denominator be? 4. four. four. So this needs to be 4, this then needs to be multiplied by 2 as well. So you have 2x over 4 plus x over 4. Now hold on. Think about this. Here's a, another problem unrelated to this, uh, and just an example to help you understand. So you had uh, 5 fourths plus uh, 7 fourths. Okay. What would you do? What would be the process to add those together? Just add what? The numerators. Excuse me. The numerators together. And we get 12 over 4. 12 over 4. Okay. So when we go to combine these together, we combine the numerators, and the numerators added together will be? x four equals five. Okay, that's good. Now what? Multiply by four. Multiply by four to cancel out that denominator of four. Three x equals twenty. Three x equals twenty thirds. If we go back here, you may want to instead multiply by the reciprocal. That's two it all out all at once. Uh, either way. Uh, we 
could also go back to the very first step. <coughs> x over 2 plus x over 4 equals 5. Uh, same idea as here, right? If we multiply by 4, right? Caroline, why did you multiply by 4 in this step? To get rid of the, the denominator. Of the Cancel out the denominator. Don't deal with fractions, right? Let's do that here. Let's multiply this by 4 and this by 4. If we distribute that here, we're going to do 4 times x over 2. 4 will cancel the denominator of 2. 4 will also cancel this denominator of 4. Right? So 4 times x over 2 uh, cancels the 4. We're left with 2x. Uh, we need to distribute the 4 here. We get 4 times x over 4 cancels those out. We're left with x. And over here we get 20. And again, 3x equals 20. And x equals 20 thirds again. That's a nice strategy. Later we'll be doing stuff like that, solving equations with fractions in them. That's a real nice thing to do is uh, multiply by the common denominator on both sides so that just all of the denominators go away. We don't have to deal with them anymore. Okay. Next one. Sides, one fourth y equals what? Seven minus three fourths. Okay, six and a quarter. Now what? Divide by one fourth. That'll definitely cancel that one fourth out. Well, well now we're dividing this guy by a fraction. Multiply by the reciprocal, okay. So let's multiply by four. So when you multiply six and a quarter by four, what do you get? When you multiply four by six and a fourth, that gives you 25 over four? Okay, so this is there's a lot of like deciding what to do. So you made what you're saying, Chauncey, right? Is that you turn six and a quarter into an improper fraction, twenty-five over four. Certainly could do that. Okay, there's there's one reality where that's what we do: twenty-five over four uh, times four cancels the fours. Y equals twenty-five. Okay, so you could turn that into uh, improper fraction, probably most people would do that. Right? Um, I had last class try and do this. Four cancels with four, and you're just left with six times one is six. But that doesn't work, right? That would work if it was six times one fourth times four. Then we could do the one fourth times four, and then six would be left. But is this six times one fourth? No. What's six and a quarter mean? Six. Six and a quarter of a. Six point two five six. What operation could I put between here? Multiplication, division. Six divided by one fourth. That's what's happening. What's that? It's addition. You're adding a fourth to uh, six holes, right? Plus. Oh, so now this is six plus one fourth times four. So we could distribute. Sometimes using this distribution idea is a little easier when you're multiplying by something. So now I distribute, right? I should be writing this over here. I can look at it. Whoa. I can look at it as uh, six plus one quarter times four over one. Distribute four times six is what? 
24. 6 times, or sorry, not 6, but 4 times 1 fourth is? 4 over 4, 4, 1, 25. So, do it that way. I think most people will do this. Turn into the proper fraction, multiply those together. That's not what I'm going to do that. Bless your heart. That's sweet. Thanks. Any more questions? I told him there was going to be fire or something. Yeah. Thank you. I can't hear it. You can listen to music while we're doing that. You can. Does anybody remember my policy on listening to music on tests? No, it doesn't. It's nothing. Definitely that. And it has to be in your bag. Yeah, you got to put it not in your pocket, not in your lap, not in your shirt, not in your sweatshirt, not in your hat, not in your hand, in your bag. I have a bag. Huh? I don't have a bag. You know, like put it in Cody's? Cody's bag? <laughs> 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 like put it in the rack of the desk. We're in quite a pickle here. Well, no, what she like puts in the basket under the desk? Can I say that? Uh, uh, 